Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue diets. There's so much controversy going on out there when someone is suffering with an adrenal fatigue problem and the controversy surrounds should I eat small meals more frequently or I've heard this thing about intermittent fasting and ketogenic diets. Which one should I do? I've been told to have small meals more frequently because I don't want my blood sugar levels to fall because if they fall too low that's going to to put more stress on the adrenal glands or if I wait too long between eating my blood sugar again is going to fall too much and that's going to put a lot of stress on my adrenal glands so how should I do some intermittent fasting does that even make sense should I do that and I'll tell you what I used to be of the belief that small meals more frequently um, is something that you need to do because when your blood sugar does fall too low your cortisol levels are released to help stabilize that and as a result you continually cause a firing of your cortisol level Levels and then supply can't keep up with demand. But I'm going to present an argument as to why that may not be the best thing to do, especially when you have some insulin problems. So let's talk about that. The first thing I want to tell you is you need to know where your blood sugar levels are at. And that's where this test comes in. It's called the uh, Precision Extra. And what it does is it's a glucometer and it's going to measure your blood sugar just like as if you're a diabetic and you're measuring your blood sugar and it's also great for measuring your ketone levels and ketones can be another source of fuel that you utilize from either the dietary fat that you ingest or your stored fat as a source of fuel. So what I want to tell you is what should I do? Should I eat small meals more frequently or should I do some intermittent fasting? And number one, it depends. It depends on do you have a chronic stress response? Do you have a maladaptive stress response? Do you have an acute stress response? Are your cortisol levels really high? Are they high and then low? Are they low throughout the entire day? It really, really depends. And that's where I would suggest that you do a dried urinary total cortisol test. I've done a couple videos on those on exactly what that is and what that entails. It doesn't, it's not taking your cortisol levels one time during the day. It's not doing it through the blood. It's not doing your ACTH levels. It's doing a urinary challenge where you're looking at your cortisol levels at four different times of the day just to see how well you're producing cortisol to get you through the day and how well you're firing it and how much of that is free and available for you. So that's a whole other video. But today I wanted to talk to you about cellular inflammation because chances are if you have a, an adrenal fatigue problem, you're suffering with inflammation. Inflammation from an infection, inflammation from trauma, inflama inflammation from environmental toxins like heavy metal exposures or pesticides or chemicals or sprays something's causing your cell to inflame and as a result when you have inflammation you have these little red dots that are binding to different receptors on the cell where insulin should be binding to and where T3 should be binding to and where cortisol should be binding to. So the reason I drew that because when you have small meals more frequently, what is happening is you're causing your insulin levels to rise. And as your insulin level rises and you have cellular inflammation around the cell, insulin is not able to bind to those receptors. As a result, you can see high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high LDLs. And so the answer to the adrenal fatigue diet has to do with knowing specifically what you, you are dealing with. Do you have high cholesterol? Do you have high triglycerides? Do you have high LDLs? Do you have low HDLs? If you do, then chances are your inflammation has resulted in insulin resistance, even if your blood sugar goes low. How can that happen? How can high blood sugar cause insulin resistance and how can low blood sugar cause insulin resistance? The thing is, is it leads to the same road. If your blood sugar falls too low, then what's going to happen is insulin is going to continually be secreted in order to try to get whatever little blood sugar you have and wring it out and get it into the cell. So high blood sugar and low blood sugar lead to the same road and that's insulin resistance. So if, follow me here. If you're having small meals more frequently, so let's say you eat at 8 and then you eat at 10 and then you eat at 12 and 3 and 5, then what's happening to your insulin levels? They're continually spiking. 
Now, what may happen with your blood sugar levels is they may be falling or they may be elevated. And the truth of the matter is you don't know. You don't know until you test. So that's where this test comes into play. I make sure every one of my patients gets this glucometer so they can say, hey, should I be eating small meals more frequently? It depends. What's your blood sugar doing? Because sometimes what will happen is you'll have a meal, say, at 8 in the morning and then you have a meal at say 10 and you look at your blood sugar levels and they're still above 100. That doesn't make sense. You you have enough sugar in your bloodstream to utilize to get into the cell, but the cell is not listening to it. It's not taking it in. And then all of a sudden you eat another meal. You're causing your blood sugars to spike even further. You're causing your insulin levels to spike even further. And then what happens is you are creating more cortisol problems because insulin is being ignored by your cells. And then your cells say, hey, we need some blood sugar. So it secretes more cortisol and it becomes a vicious cycle. So my feeling is, is that you really need to determine what stages of adrenal fatigue you are by doing an adrenal test. You need to know your real-time values of your glucose and your ketones to see are you utilizing energy from the dietary fat and your stored fat? Are you utilizing sugar from your blood from your glucose? Um, is it too high? Is it insulin resistant? Are your are your cholesterol and triglyceride levels high? Do you crash after a meal and get very, very tired? If these are the cases, then you are insulin resistant and having small meals more frequently is not going to fix that problem. You're going to have to reduce your inflammation. You're going to have to increase your dietary fats, control your proteins, lower your carbs, and you're going to have to heal that cell. And the best way to heal that cell is through intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet. So um, there's a lot of information in this video. I could probably do another five um, types of um, topics, and I will. I'll continue that. But this is a primer for you to start thinking different and start thinking, yeah, you know what? I've been doing a uh, small meal more frequently you know, for the last six months, and I don't feel any better. And so you need to start looking at it from a different angle and figure out why. And if it's because you are uh, insulin resistant, you have inflammation, you have environmental toxicities, you're taking a bunch of hormones, if that's the case and you're not feeling better, then your inflammation has caused resistance to the messages that these hormones are, are placing and they're not doing anything. And it's time to switch it up. So anyways, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Your Adrenal Fix. I am uh, looking for anyone that is needing help with their adrenal problems. Please call me or uh, call, click on the link to this uh, email. We do free 15-minute phone consults. And give me a share, a comment, a like. Check out my Facebook page at Adrenal Fatigue um, Recovery or check out my blog at Adrenal Fatigue Society. Look forward to helping you in your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.